So I just wanted to briefly um, show you the, the, the new product that I'm, I've been working on for the last several years. Um, maybe you're already familiar with the Comet 64 internet modem. This was something I made back in 2008 or 9. Um, sold a whole bunch of them. And it was a great little device and everything, but um, it needed to do some more things. One of them it needed to do was to not brick. <laughs> so um, there's a little board on this. Um, this board is manufactured by a company called WizNet. And when you go into configuration mode, it's possible to brick it. And it's something they couldn't figure out why it was happening, and it's something I certainly couldn't figure out why it's happening because I didn't make this red red board. I only made the board that it plugs into. Um, so it's great as long as you don't go into configuration mode. You're just happy with it and um, connecting to a server here and there. But um, another another thing I wanted to do was add um, support for the uh, IEC bus. Um, currently, in the in the original Comet 64, you would have to plug it into the user port, and then you'd have to load a driver to actually use it because there's no native support built in for just saying load something from the Comet and have it load from the internet, which is, which is what you would do with this. And I wrote a program called V1541 that em simulated a a disk drive, and when you run that program and you type load, it loads something. It would comma two. It would redirect it to this to the RS-232 port and load it off of the internet, which is cool, but the problem is you have to have that, that program in order to do that. So um, so the newer version that I have has an IEC port built on, and I completely did away with that WizNet board and rewrote basically the firmware that they wrote. I wrote it myself. Um, that way I can brick it the way I want to break it. <laughs> um, anyhow, this has this has support for two connectors. I only have one soldered on this one. Um, obviously, an Ethernet connector. It also has an RS-232 port on it, um, and then just some power. And it has some built-in flash uh, RAM and some static RAM and some other little goodies. Um, it's also powered by USB instead of powered by the 64 to not strain the uh, power supplies of your 64s. Um, anyway, I've been talking about this for quite some time, and it finally made some progress this weekend, actually. So, <laughs> thanks to Jim Drew. <laughs> um, yeah, just in time. So I'm able to show part of it. Um, there's still some glitches, and I'll I'll get those worked out. But a major piece of it has been solved. Uh, I basically forgot to ground one of the pins on one of the chips. So no ground, no worky. <laughs> um, so anyway, this operates in, in three different modes. This is a user port device that works like the Comet 64. It's also possible to run it standalone with just power and an IEC connector. You don't even have to have it plugged into your 64. And you can load, load and save just like you would a disk drive. But the, the files would go to Commodore server, um, possibly other destinations, um, and allow you to, you know, use the cloud, so to speak, for your files. Can I ask um, a question? Yeah. Will it have any kind of like uh, fast loader support? Like will it have fast load support? So, yes, it will. I am not there yet. I started looking into the Jiffy DOS protocol, and it's not super complicated, but what was complicated is that that pin was not grounded, so it was really driving me crazy how I right. couldn't get good, clean signals on the IEC bus. Right. But now that I have that working, I should be able to, to solve that next piece. Cool. Yeah. Um, so it's some Jiffy dos like support. I don't think I can call it Jiffy DOS, according to Jim Brain. Sure, but it'll still <laughs> load everything faster. Though. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's the device. And I'm going to show, oh, and there's the third mode, which is um, Probably the first product that I'm going to release is called the Comet BBS, and the, it supports this board supports all of those modes. <clears throat> but um, the Comet BBS would plug into the user port, and it's a Hayes compatible modem. Um, instead of telephone lines, that it uses the internet. So what that allows you to do is just plug this in, load up your favorite terminal program, 
hop around between BBSs if, you, if that's your thing, or you can actually host your own BBS with just this device. You don't have to have um, multiple devices in, in line. A lot of people will buy some kind of RS-232 interpreter and then hook it up to their PC, and the PC would provide the internet. So that's like two other steps involved. This would just replace all of that. Um, so that's the part I'm going to show you today is the Comet BBS, and we're, gonna, we're just going to open up the terminal program, which I did, and you can start issuing AT commands to it, just like it were a regular modem. All right. So I have it configured for 1200 baud. We can switch it to 2400 baud. In fact, I will switch it to 2400 baud. So first thing I'll show you is just ATI. ATI is the information command. Um, all these AT commands were defined by Hayes back in the day. Um, and it, it doesn't necessarily support every single Hayes command, but it supports the major ones, most of them. Uh, this is just the information. It shows um, like your MAC address, and your IP address, <laughs> and your baud rate. Oh, it says 1200, interesting. Obviously some glitches. Um, those S registers, uh, like S0 is how many, how many rings you wait before it answers an incoming call. Um, S3 is the carriage return character that you wish to use for new lines, things like that. Um, another neat thing about the, the internet mode, the Comet BBS is it has built-in support for um, an address book. So these are some examples of BBSs that you can connect to, and you can save these. So if you're into BBSing, this is a great way to, to hop around between different BBSs. I actually don't have a membership on here, so I can't really log in, but I can show a list of members who are on here. You may recognize a lot of those. Pretty big BBS. All right, so um, since I'm not going to log in, I'm just going to hit plus plus plus, which gets me back into command mode, and I can just hang up with ATH. So we're off of that BBS now. Um, I'll do one more. <coughs> we can log into, uh, I don't know, SCORP. Let's try SCORP ATD7. I think he has a nice graphic. It could be not. It could be not up. All right. I'm just going to reset this because it's going <coughs> to. I don't know what the timeout is on that. So another neat little thing, there's a little um, OLED display on this. It's actually on wires right now, but it will be a permanent member of the board at some point um, that tells you certain things. Like it just told me it was trying to get the DHCP address. All right, it's connected now. There we go. All right, let's connect to... Uh, Let's connect to Murad, number four, ATD4. 
Yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, too bad he's out. I haven't been fun to out. chat with him. Just visiting. Oops. Tricks of system. What? All right, so that's uh, some things you can do. I'm going to just disconnect, abort. Accept incoming connections as well. So, if does anybody have Telnet over there? Who's on our same network? Yep. I do. Can you Telnet into a, to my IP address? All right. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot sixty four dot eighty two. So CS register zero says set to one ring. So as soon as he connects, oh, it's port twenty three. It should it should ring. I'm hoping. I haven't tried this before the demo. Uh, and then it should automatically answer. I tell it, yeah, I'm using sync term. It says I'm connected. It's not doing much. It could very well be my end. I connect from my phone. Let me, I just did ATH just to oh, make sure the socket was closed. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So oh, now it's connected. Like somebody else. So can you type to me? I think it showed connect when I disconnected. I was going to try and sub return a little bit. Can you see my Nah, this is on me. This is something on my end. Oh, okay. Let's see if But wait till he's off. Well, if you try it right now, it, if you try it right now, because I'm already in a connection with him, you should get a busy message. And it's space, not colon, for tell, Windows Telnet. Yeah. You don't even have to put support in Windows Telnet. So what's it say? Uh, you don't have it installed. <laughs> okay, never mind. So that's... Oh. Did you just send that? Nope. Must have been in the buffer. <laughs> All right. Well, again. Who's hacking the system? 
Eighty. Plus, uh, what else can we do? There's, you're you're able to set uh, two profiles in here too. So if you have different settings, um, let's say that you're running a VBS and you need it to run it, um, you know, with auto answer set to zero or one or whatever, you can set all of those register settings and then save it to a profile right on the board and then recall that profile back at any time. And you can do that with two different profiles. Um, other than that, I mean, it, it, it's pretty much just response to any, any of the standard AT commands. AT, E for echo, I can turn echo off. So now when I type, you won't see what I type. Um, <coughs> until I turn it back on, A, T, E, 1. So, anyhow, it's, it's a modem. I don't know how else to, what else to show you with it, but any questions? Where's the maximum baud rate? Um, it can support any baud rate. Uh, oh, I know one other thing I didn't tell you. Um, it supports any baud rate, but obviously whatever the Commodore can support, um, you, would set, you would set the baud rate accordingly. Um, it'll take too long for me to set it up, but I, I took a SwiftLink cartridge, I plugged it into my cartridge port, I ran an RS-232 wire into this RS-232 input, not plugged into the 64, and I was able to use it just as if it were plugged into the 64, but the advantage is that SwiftLink can go up to super high baud rates, and I was able to run it at 38K on SwiftLink um, you know, in standalone mode, not through the user port. So what that means is you can use this on other computers who have RS-232 ports. Apples, Ataris, Pets, anything that has an RS-232 port. You can now use this as a as an IP-based modem. What is your timeline for production of the Comet BBS? Greg? When it's done. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, I don't have one. I, I can't tell you when it's going to be done because it's a matter of just me getting it done when I have time to do it. So, uh, But it's really close. It's closer than it's ever been. Obviously, I've shown this in the past couple years, and um, it's really close this year. So a few more tweaks, and I should be able to get some production boards in play. Yeah. Okay, so this kind of goes back to the last thing you demonstrated. Just out of curiosity, can the screencasting also work with the CCGMS program that you're using? Or is there an incompatibility issue with, say, just streaming what you just displayed? Would that have also worked? Do you still have a screencast going? I was just curious. <laughs> no, but I can. I'll, what it would do is it would connect to the server. You, you could do it with, with using the commands that screencast program does on Commodore server to get into the chat room and to join into the screencast. But you're also already using the port. But once you do that, it, you're going to also see all of the control codes that come oh, through. Okay. It's not going to work like it works in BASIC because there's no program that interprets those control codes okay. to link the cursor or whatever, you know, to poke the border colors, those sorts of things. Okay. So, yes and no. It, it wouldn't be a very good use for that. I figure if I could ask one dumb question, I'm okay. Okay, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I know another question a lot of people ask, how does this differ from the Comet Plus? And when is the Comet Plus going to be there? And why is there a Comet Plus, a Comet BBS, a Comet 64? Um, so this kind of this kind of spawned from the Comet Plus. The Comet Plus was originally going to be kind of a user port hacking device. You could plug it in and it would have all of the neat features, the IEC port, the RS-232 port, SD card, flash, um, Wi-Fi, all kinds of stuff like that. And that's still a dream of mine, but in order to get the Comet Plus done, I had to do a lot of the firmware to do those things. And so um, I ran out of production on the Comet 64, and people were still asking for those. And so my quick solution was to um, uh, make rewrite the Comet 64 firmware and use the same board and sell it as a Comet 64. Um, but like I said, all that firmware is kind of tied together. And 
I've been having to develop all of those pieces separately. Um, so once those are all done and able to be supported in the simpler versions of the Comet Plus, these other products, the Comet BBS and the Comet 64, um, I will then roll those into the Comet Plus. And the Comet Plus is kind of a different um, aspect. It, it has like um, more headers and the ability to put wires into it and put wires into a little onboard breadboard and just be able to experiment with your own Arduino code right on the user port of the Commodore 64 while supporting things like IEC and RS-232. So it's a little ways off. Um, we'll see how this product goes first. How long do you think it'll be before you can actually roll it Yeah, I don't know. Just, I have to work on this in my spare time, and that's been light lately. Do you have a, do you have a price point or target you I would like to keep it $100 or less, um, hopefully in the 60 to $70 range. But I couldn't answer that right now because I don't have my full bill of materials mapped out um, in quantity. So. And I'm just curious, could it be used on the 64 yeah, yeah, in fact, okay, so the, the user port obviously works on the 128, the 64, and the VIC-20, VIC-20, yeah, VIC-20, um, but things like the IEC bus, that works on those computers as well, plus four, com, what is the, the, C16, C16 have the serial port too, the same one, or is it a smaller one, you have to have an adapter? Oh, the serial serial port, like the user port you mean? No, the serial bus. IEC? Yeah. IEC is the same. IEC is the same, but C16 has no user port. No user port, right. Right. Yeah. So, So you could use that feature on those computers, or or if you have a, a B128. Have you ever thought of maybe adapting to some other or something? The only support for PET on this would be to be able, to, you would have to have one of the adapters I have no intention of putting a PET connector on this thing. It's already jam-packed in, in a small size. Um, but you could definitely interface it through the RS-232 port as well. If you have an RS-232 PET, like the... Yeah, or the, exactly. Or any, any computer that has an RS-232 port. Um, I should also mention the Comet BBS. If you're going to run a BBS, having the IEC port built in, gives you a whole new level of accessibility for disk, disk uh, file support. So if you're running a BBS, you can connect it to the internet and have all of those disks available in your, in your BBS. So you don't have to have 10 different floppy drives. Not 10. <coughs> you know what I mean? All right. Well, that's all I got. Thanks for listening.